Welcome to the Myrtle Beach Art Museum's Library After School Program. This workshop is called Creative Cartography and is inspired by the Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Historical Prints on exhibit through April 3rd. Welcome to a virtual tour of the Art Museum's Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Prints. I'm the curator of exhibitions, Liz Miller. The collection is comprised of 30 works dated from 1606 to 1863. It was donated to the Art Museum by Mrs. Dorothy Jones Bishop in 1999 after the passing of her husband, George Bishop. Okay, let's get started on our tour. Following the discovery of the New World in the 15th century, European countries sought to document and map new territories using cartographic methods and technologies developed as early as the 13th century. The invention of the magnetic compass, telescope, and sextant enabled increasing accuracy. You may be wondering what cartography is. It's just a fancy word for map making. Many early European cartographers were recruited from the ranks of painters, miniaturists, and other artists. What's a miniaturist, you wonder? It just means an artist who works in a really small scale. Over the centuries, cities including Amsterdam, Florence, London, Paris, and Venice competed as map-making centers of the world. A succession of explorers, artists, and mathematicians gathered in these hubs to create new maps introducing the expanding world. Wondering what mathematicians have to do with cartography? They have to calculate scale so that everything on the map looks proportionate. Ah. Typically, they copied earlier maps, some of which had been passed down for centuries, and drew their own based on explorers' observations and new surveying techniques. The golden era of decorated and colored map production took place during the late 17th and 18th centuries, with each expedition to the Americas resulting in a better understanding of the coastal and inland topography of the continents. The early cartographers relied heavily on Native American descriptions, unsubstantiated reports, and hearsay for the development of their maps. So maybe somebody said, that mountain was huge, but in reality, it wasn't all that big. As a result of all of these things, topographic features of this period were often exaggerated or misrepresented. The first map we're going to look at in the collection is the earliest dated map. It dates to around 1606 and it was created by cartographer Gerard Mercator and engraved by Jodicus Hondius. The Mercator Hondius map became the most important regional map of its time, being closely followed cartographically for nearly 70 years after its initial printing. It also played a large role in helping a group of Englishmen establish what is arguably the most important colonization in North American history, Jamestown, Virginia. Geographical and topographical misconceptions abound throughout the map. For instance, the waterfall depicted in the Apalachti or Appalachian Mountains is thought to be Niagara Falls by today's historians. The large lake shown just below that is based partly on Indian myth and the early depiction of the Okefenokee Swamp. St. Augustine is erroneously placed, which gives the illusion of a compact coastline for today's South Carolina and Georgia. Embellished with various game, ocean vessels, sea monsters, and Indian villages, it is considered to be one of the most beautifully executed maps ever of the Southeast. This map is one of the most special in our collection. It was made by Mark Catesby, and it was published in his Natural History of Carolina, Florida, and the Bahama Islands in London in 1731 and 32. The subscribers to Catesby's celebrated natural history received this map bound into their volumes, illustrating the area with which Catesby dealt in his famous work illustrating plants, animals, birds, fish, and insects of America. This scarce map, embellished with a seaweed and seashell-covered cartouche, is considered by many collectors to be one of the most highly prized maps of the colonial South. 
This next map was published in Nuremberg in 1746 by perhaps the most famous German map publisher of his time, Johann Baptist Hohmann. Really sought after for his talents, he achieved greatness even during his lifetime. With such praise surrounding him, it was only fitting that he was appointed geographer to the emperor in 1715. This map depicts the Americas with the various political regions color-coded. The line of demarcation is accurately drawn, and a great deal of Western Europe and Western Africa is included. Indian tribes are identified throughout the map. In North America, California is shown in peninsular form. However, the Northwest region is still in doubt, ergo completely omitted. Homan maps such as this one are generally engraved with immense and fine detail. The cartouche is normally a story in itself, with volcanoes erupting, beautiful Native Americans, gold treasure spilling over, and lush tropical foliage. <music> To view the complete virtual tour of the museum's Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Prints, please visit our virtual museum page at www.myrtlebeachartmuseum.org. Now it's time for an art project. These are the materials you will need. Art kit materials which include 12 by 18 inch construction paper, Q-tips, acrylic paint mixed with water, other materials are crayons or colored pencils, and a paintbrush, which is optional. The first step is to take your 12 by 18 inch construction paper and either your colored pencils or crayons and create a map. So you can make your landforms in any type of shape that you'd like. And you can create islands, continents. It's entirely up to you. The next step is to add color to your land masses, and you can even color in your water as well. And you can use whichever colors you'd like. But if you'd like an added challenge, you can try coloring in your map in a style that is similar to a favorite artist. So I'm going to do this map in the style of Van Gogh. Van Gogh was a post-impressionist artist and as you can see from these two examples, he uses short brush strokes and lots of different colors. So I'm going to try and replicate that with my map. If you have a white crayon, I strongly encourage you to create different marks on your paper. You could create waves in your ocean, or I'm kind of doing the similar kind of short brush strokes uh, using a crayon instead of paint that is similar to Van Gogh's style. And although you won't be able to see it at the moment, when we get to the part where we're going to actually paint over our entire map, all those white crayon marks will show up. Okay, so the next step is kind of tough <laughs> after you just spent all this time on your map, but you're going to crumple up your map really, really good. You want a lot of wrinkles. So after you crumple up once, you're going to carefully open it. Don't worry if you rip it. It will end up looking cool anyway. And you're going to smooth it out real nice. And then you're going to crumple it up again. 
<laughs> then you're going to open it back up and smooth it out again. The next step is to open your container of acrylic paint. I've already watered it down for you a little bit just so it wouldn't dry out, but you're going to want to add more water. You want that paint to be really thin, and you can take your Q-tips and paint your entire paper. If you have a paintbrush at home, it would definitely be a lot easier and less time consuming. So definitely use a paintbrush if you have that and you're going to paint over everything on the front of your map. Once you've painted the front, flip it over and you should have enough paint left, plenty of paint, to paint the entire back as well. So once you've painted both sides, you're going to want to lay it flat for it to completely dry. It should only take maybe an hour, and while it's wet, it will be kind of more fragile and could easily tear, but once it dries, it will kind of thicken again. So now you have a map that looks like it's really old, and you can even tear holes in it or rip the edges to make it even look more old. These are some other artists who you could use as inspiration for stylizing your map. We would love to see your creations. You can share them with us on Instagram or Facebook either by tagging us or using the hashtag MBArtMuseum. Thank you to our generous sponsors and supporters. Thank you to our library partners.